Hey, welcome back to the Tro channel. It's been a long time. Four months. But fuck it, dude. We're back. And I'm bringing you guys something totally new this time. Hot, sweaty, booty juices flowing, rated arena. As my friend and I try and push into the top 10% of players against all odds in some dumpster tier gear. So without further ado, Jamie, cue the video. Normally, 1800 rating wouldn't mean shit, but for the first time since 2013, Blizzard has decided to implement meaningful gear locked behind PvP. Players will buy this gear with PvP earned currency and be able to upgrade the gear to higher and higher levels as their PvP rank increases. With some of this gear being the strongest gear in the game, Arena is more incentivized and competitive than ever before, meaning you'll find a sea of competitors in bracket, from boosters, smurfs, PvE gods, and all sorts of shit that will will definitely one-shot you, even in the best gear, if you ain't paying attention. Oh, I almost got the reflect, but I did banner it. I did banner it. I DIDN'T POP EVERYTHING! So as a result of this seemingly chaotic bracket, rating has become extremely deflated, meaning that hitting just 1800 will put you around the top 10% of players. With the expansion being out for a long time now, who can expect his contestants to be geared to the teeth with 40,000 health and 226 item level, whereas Poom is currently sitting at 33k health and 204 item level, meaning he is waiting to be spanked. Daddy. Additionally, Shadowlands is an extremely burst heavy meta, making it easy to die from full health in a single stun. So warriors must play orc for the 20% reduced incoming stun timers as they already struggle with defensives and staying alive sometimes. Now, alternatively, as a hipster wanting to flex their over 9,000 game IQ, it's essential to play the most edgy and innovative race in the game, undead. Sacrificing 20% stun reduction for pure sex appeal and the added ability to eat dead bodies mm. Love your intestines Is a no-brainer And with that out of the way, I would like to introduce you to my beautiful, sensational, furry friend Hensong or Kyle, geared to 226 item level with loads of PvP experience and one of my longtime best friends, we're gonna give our full effort to condemn mind games and blast poop all the way to 1800 against all odds. We began recording around 1550 rating, as this is when the fights really started to become challenging. With our opponents seemingly always in better gear than Poomp, Kyle and I had to start relying on making smart plays and well-timed kill setups to keep climbing in rank. Now what a kill setup is varies depending on the enemy team composition, so for context I'll quickly give you two broad examples that roughly encapsulate the types of teams you'll face in 2v2 arena. Example 1, the enemy team is composed of two damage dealing roles, meaning where they lack in defense is made up for in their offensive damage output, often referred to as pressure. Two well geared DPS could easily kill you through heals if you're not properly prepared with defensive abilities or an escape plan. So oftentimes in this kind of a matchup, I'll find myself not able to hit the enemy team because every time I show them my face, they instantly put me on the verge of death with their damage pressure. So in this situation, a good kill setup would be shutting down the enemy team's damage long enough for you to kill one of them before they kill you. The best way to do this is via splitting up the enemy team so they can't attack you at the same time, or through abilities referred to as crowd control or CC. These are abilities that disable some level of character function for the enemy player. The primary CC abilities a warrior has is Stormbolt, a long range four second stun that disables the opponent 
opponent from using abilities or moving. An intimidating shout, an ability that sends all opponents near the warrior fleeing. During this, they cannot control their character or cast spells similar to a stun, but if a fleeing player is hit with damage, it will break the fear and give the player full control over their character again. In this specific arena, our enemies are playing rogue and mage. When the two players were synergized and attacking me together, their pressure is insane, but often, this rogue would get scared and run away to enter stealth, and thus, this created our kill window. Without having the rogue there to back them up, the mage fell and couldn't do much to stop it. For example 2, we're going to go over the most common type of team composition we'll be seeing in 2v2 Arena. One healer paired with one DPS. This is what Kyle and I are running. One person focuses on killing and applying offensive pressure, while the other focuses on keeping everyone alive and positioning in a way that makes it hard for the enemy to CC them. This is because the primary kill setup for going against healer DPS teams is to crowd control the healer, aka the defensive role, making it impossible for them to heal their teammate. In this window where the healer is sitting idle and they're DPS is getting spanked without any kind of heals coming their way, once the CC wears off the healer, they will have to dump their powerful cooldowns just to keep their teammate alive. And that's assuming their teammate managed to survive all on their own while the healer was furiously staring at their disabled character. So as you can see in this arena, we have strong pressure on the enemy monk, and the healer has already gone through most of their defensive cooldowns, meaning if we make one more big play, the enemy team likely doesn't have enough abilities recharged yet to sustain themselves and their teammate. So in this situation, we're going against Monk, Priest. The Monk being the damage dealer, and the Priest being the Holy Preacher of the Lord's Law. Seeing we have some good pressure on the Monk, Kyle and I begin looking for a stun on the healer. I'm now close enough to their healer to send off my Storm Bolt, stunning the heals for 4 seconds, and giving us just enough time to secure the kill. Okay, so I know that was a shit ton to process all at once. But before we get into the real 1800 push, all you have to remember is this. Get the enemy's health to zero before yours hits zero. If you win games, you earn rating. And if you lose games, you lose rating. And finally, if we manage to hit that 1800 mark, I'll be able to upgrade all my gear to 220 item level, drastically increasing my character's damage and survivability. All right, let's jump into the games. <laughs> Well, happy, dude. I'm gonna make him so sad. Nani? I'm sitting? Why did I sit? Why did I sit? Oh, he needs some milk! And thus, begins the long road to 1800 rating. Thanks to 12 years of WoW experience and Kyle's epic heals, getting to 1600 wasn't too problematic. Oh, it was sharp, it was sharp. We can, we can, we can. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Nice. Oh my And pretty gosh. quickly we reached it, allowing us to increase our PvP gear to item level 213. Oh, only tons of gear? That's good. <gasps> when the following game left me laying with my face on the cold, bloody floor of the arena, I decided I would take up the gear vendor on that offer, upgrading however much gear I could afford, bringing us from 202 item level to 206. Feeling badass and sexy, we queue for another arena, just for Poomp to bend over and open up his ginormous- Sitting 200 rating away from that 1800 goal and already getting slapped in the face wasn't going to stop Kyle and I. We put our heads down, accepted our losses, and trekked forward, leading us to a win against the adorable Battle Sprout. Then another loss. <laughs> Damn, look at their pressure. It was way over mine, though. Followed by super fucking elite epic gamer orc with dope sick fucking goggles. He's so sick. So of course, a loss. But you know, in videos, when things go bad, it's only to make the ups more epic. So the next game, you guessed it. I'm dying, help me. Big damn, huge damn, come on. We had a fucking loss, okay? A fucking tilting one, too! But now, the rage flows inside of Poomp, and unlucky for Hagsol, he was about to get this rotten cocker spaniel. I stun here, because he's just going all in. And then I disarm. Shut down his whole burst, hopefully. Stunning him and taking away his weapons on his burst, Hagsol had nothing left, and it was Poomp's turn to unleash COVID-19 directly into this orc's bloodstream. <laughs> followed by another victory, and another, and another. Ooh, what the f did you hit? What was that? 
And another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge, huge. Come on, he's sharpened too. He can't. Yeah. And another. At this point, Poomp is 1688 rating. Straight high on life. Nothing can stop him. Except this 10 second match. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck, dude. I should have trinketed. Both players on the enemy team were already rated 1800, so Poomp lost no rating as that's quite a bit higher than where we're at right now. But still, Poomp found himself at 1700 rating. Unfathomable. And then back to 1692. Fuck! Redeeming himself with an epic three win streak. Yes. 1800 felt not so far away, and maybe his ego got a little too big. Yes! <laughs> oh, I almost got the reflect, but I did banner it. I did banner it. Another Swifty one shot macro. God fucking damn it! How did I not see it? Sitting around 1750 at this point, the stakes were high. Win, then affliction lock, then an epic CC chain on the healer and a paladin who thinks Bubble is a trash ability. Uh, After mashing and smashing our way through a feral druid disc uh, team, Yes, dude, yes! Poop has hit an all-time high rating. 17, 69. Not so far from 1800. Lost, lost! Hello darkness, my old friend. Ah! Lost! After falling okay, to 1733, I knew I had to step it up and stop playing like a brain dead zombie if I wanted Kyle to stay hopeful in our cause. Leaping and charging my way around the map, we managed to secure a win against the Shadow Priest yes! Paladin, followed by a double Paladin team who made the critical mistake of attacking anything other than squishy weak ass poop. Sitting at 1761, I'm on the edge of my seat. Seriously, so stressed. And at this point, it's been about five hours of gameplay with no breaks. And to hit 1800, we're gonna have to do it soon because it's getting close to Kyle's bedtime. Next up, an Ellie Shom Disc Priest. A frustrating combination of classes for me to stay on because a few strong CC abilities, great damage from the Shaman, and even pretty decent damage from the Priest, we weren't able to make this game happen. And if that's not enough, next game, I fall for this sweaty orc, take me behind a pillar before he tears me about eight new holes trick. <laughs> Sitting in a stun for nine seconds remind me why I don't play orc. Because I'm a stupid idiot head. Oh. Just in the following game, I found myself having the exact same realization. Kidney. Oh! Back down to 1730, my palms were sweating, my brain felt like mush, and I hadn't ate in six hours. I was starting to lose hope. You're being killed by the legendary cool butts. And falling even further to 1719, things were looking grim. If there was ever a time for a clutch comeback, it would be right now. Rogue Mage, an extremely burst heavy duo, and after being spanked by the last two rogues I've seen, I knew I had to play this safe. Instantly, on their initial burst, I pop two abilities that increase my health by 50% temporarily and work to escape the mage's vision. After successfully surviving the opener, I knew we had a chance. After a few minutes running around the map like chickens with our head cut off, we ended up securing the victory. Priest Fire Mage. Lots of potential, but luckily, we catch the Shadow Priest off guard and take him down in a fast win. Break time's over when the next game we get set into a long and drawn out match of tag. I'm dying. Help me. As the enemy keeps me at bay with patience and some luck. Ah. Oh. oh! What just happened? Poomp's almost back to 1760. At this point, all the games are long, sweaty, and hard. My gear's massive shittiness is really starting to show as I hit my targets with what seems to be a foam sword, but somehow we prevail. Yes! <laughs> In a butt-clenching showdown, Kyle and I face off against a hunter and paladin, both of us putting on serious pressure, but ultimately, they take the W. Yeah. Then, Fearsham, we take a W. Yes! The next team we face must have just got their COVID test results back positive because the second Kyle and I are within six foot range,
they disappear. A bit of an unsportsmanlike win, but we find ourselves at 1788. Just one good win could take us all the way to 1800, and all the best gear I can imagine could become mine. But no, we get thrashed and my rating falls to 1778. Any loss at this point feels catastrophic. 1800 is not guaranteed, and based on my gear, along with being a bit rusty, it honestly should not happen. And that's just how things were starting to shape up as another loss came in, taking me down to 1767. That said, I knew giving up wasn't gonna get me anywhere though, so holding my head high, I reflect some juicy chaos bolts and eventually hitting my biggest execute yet. Order the 10K condemn! 10K! An epic win brings me to 1780. My glory was short-lived when next match, I found myself facing one of the scariest duos again, Rogue Mage. Incredible damage and incredible CC, any slight misplays will send me into the dirt. Lucky for me though, they decide to hit Kyle, leaving me to hang out in CC as they neglect to acknowledge how much more damage they could be dealing to me. Thanks to this mishap, we managed to pretty easily walk our way to victory and Poom finds himself at 1794 rating. We are just one win away from doing what seemed impossible not so long ago. And to be honest, it still feels slightly impossible right now. It would only take a few concurrent losses before I found myself back in the low 1700s. Nervous but excited, we queue back up. This game could truly make or break everything we've been working for. And as we exit the gates, Kyle recognizes that it's not our first time facing off against these opponents. And indeed, he's right. <laughs> not so many games ago, this team had managed to keep their distance from me, and in the meantime, detonate Poomp. There was no secrets here. They knew how squishy and easy to kill I was, so all I could do was give it my best shot. NANI?! I stun here, I know I'm out of line. Oh. Gotta be careful with these kicks, I'm giving them away like crazy. A kick? Nice. Come on, we can sharpen. We can sharpen. <laughs> we did it! Fuck yeah, Kyle! 1800, baby! Holy shit! Oh. First of all, I would like to say a giant thank you to Kyle for making this whole grind possible with his crazy skills, and I know he definitely carried me in some ways and in some of these games. That's an understatement, if anything. Thank you so much, Kyle, for making this possible. Moving on, with successfully completing the 1800 2v2 arena status, we've managed to upgrade our gear quite a bit. Most of our items now sitting 
at 220, except for I believe the only item that's not 220 at this point is going to be my headpiece because I don't have enough conquest at the moment. We're pretty much all 220 where it really counts. And this has been unbelievable. The amount of damage we can put out now, especially since we've upgraded to the Executioner to make the most of our OP Condemn, we're on a whole nother level. And it was a real blast getting to push in Shadowlands Arena, and maybe it's just because my class just so happened to be so powerful. But if you would be interested in seeing me trying to take my upgraded gear all the way to 2100 for the next item upgrade that we can get, please let me know in the comments. But if you enjoyed it, please drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. Also, want this video to get out there on the algorithm because you know you put 30 40 hours into a video you want to get some results come on come on and on that note we're out of here thanks again baby girl